Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And I welcome you all to Mount Calvary for this sixth Sunday of the Paschal Easter season as we rejoice in the great good news of our Lord's triumph over the grave and over sin and death. Also, we welcome all our friends and family who are here for the confirmation of five young women who are ready to be admitted to communicant membership. So we are pleased and thank God for that moment in their lives. 
If you're joining us online and want to get a copy of the bulletin to follow along, go to our webpage, www.mountcalvarypeoria.org. Look under media and you'll see where you'll be able to download a copy of that. For the rest of you all here, if you take time to fill out one of the registration cards, drop it off in the offering plate when you depart. We appreciate your help with that. Also, if you are a guest this morning, uh, we have a registering for Holy Communion statement on the front of your bulletin. Read through that to decide whether or not it is appropriate for you to join us for communion at that point in the service. And then, everyone, take a moment to wave at one another. We are still not passing the peace, but you're all at peace with one another now, which is important as we gather together. Now, um, as is our custom, we recognize that today is Mother's Day, and the first thing I'm going to just ask is, all of you who are here because a woman gave birth to you, please stand. <laughs> and that's simply a recognition of how important the vocation and calling of motherhood is to us all, and so it's appropriate for us at the beginning of the service to take time to give God thanks and to pray for mothers everywhere. Please join me. Gracious and loving God, you provide for all your children in ways more wonderful than we can understand or even see. You give us food and shelter, clothes and work, friends and family, sun and rain, spring and fall, and more than we can reckon. You also give us our mothers, women in whom we have come to know something of your unconditional love. Lord, we thank you for our mothers, and we pray that you would help us to honor them for your sake, to love them and support them in their work, to serve and obey them, that they may be cheered through us. We pray also that you would be with our mothers and with all mothers, that you would aid them with your spirit and comfort, that you would strengthen them in your love, guide them in your wisdom, and that through your Son, you would make them witnesses to your love in this world that so greatly needs to know of your love. Finally, Lord God, we would ask you to comfort both those mother whose mothers have died and those mothers who carry the burden of having buried children. Let your gentle spirit give them the peace of knowing that in you nothing is truly lost. And that in your Son, even as he has triumphed over death, so we continue to walk in union by faith with those who have gone to their rest before us. We pray these things, trusting in your abundant grace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated for the opening hymn.
invite you to stand for the order of confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. I invite you to examine your conscience now in silence before the Lord, according to his word and your place in life. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Most merciful God, God, we confess that we are many persons who are unworthy. We have sinned against you, our Father, and indeed, our Lord, and 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 our Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, therefore I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. We join in the introit. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Receive our prayer, for you are the Holy One. 
O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. Well, for our younger folk, our gospel reading this morning is still in John chapter 14. And for those of you who have been with us the past few weeks, you'll remember that in John chapter 14, we're still with Jesus in the upper room on the night that he celebrated the Lord's Supper and just a few hours before he's going to be arrested and then tried and crucified and, and died. So he's trying to get the disciples ready for what it means for him to die and be raised. And there are three things that I want you to listen for in the gospel and in the sermon today. So the first thing that Jesus says is, if I go away, I'm going to send a helper to you, even the spirit of truth, and he is going to be with you and in you. And of course, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, right? And you might say, well, wait, isn't the Holy Spirit there already? And of course, the answer is yes. The Holy Spirit has been with us since creation, always leading people to faith, always showing them the glory and the mercy of God. But up until Jesus' birth and life and death and resurrection, the Holy Spirit could only point people forward to one day when God would do all these great works. With Jesus' death and resurrection, God has completed everything needed for our salvation and for us to have life in him. And now when the Spirit comes, what he does is he helps us to know what Jesus did for us and to receive Jesus' gifts. Everything that Jesus accomplished on the cross and with his resurrection, the Spirit now brings to you in wisdom and understanding because he's the spirit of truth. And not only is he with you, but Jesus promises that he will dwell in you and he will nudge you to believe and he will nudge you to share Jesus' life because here's the second thing Jesus will say that I want you to listen for. Because I live, you also will live. And what he means by that, of course, is because he is raised and glorified and has eternal life with the Father, guess what you are all destined for? You are destined to be raised and to have eternal life with the Father as well. So because I live, you also will live, and the Spirit is going to be the one who's going to help you to live that life, which means that sometimes the Spirit's going to nudge you and tell you, you know what, you, you need to forgive that person. Or sometimes the Spirit's going to nudge you and say, yeah, you need to listen to God's word here. Or sometimes the Spirit's going to nudge you and say, you know what, you need to show grace and mercy to that person over there. The Spirit is constantly moving us to share the life of our risen Lord because Jesus lives with us. And then the last thing Jesus says is, on that day when you see me raised, you're going to know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me and I am in you and you are in me. Which means that right now we are sharing the life of Jesus and then we have the opportunity to share that life and light with others around us. Everyone whose life God gives you to touch. You can share with them the grace and the love of Jesus. So the resurrection means that Jesus is with us. He gives us his spirit, and we now get to share his life and love with all others. So be listening for those things. I'm going to get back to the service now. First reading this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles, the 17th chapter. Now, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him, and some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now, 
all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I was passing along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think of the divine being as like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. I invite you to join me in the response of singing of a portion of Psalm 66. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. That which my lips uttered, and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fat animals, with sweet and sour sacrifice of hands. I will make an offering of all the angels. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But to the unanswered he has sent the voice of my prayer. Blessed be he, God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory, Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading continues from the first letter of Peter, now the third chapter. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. 
Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who's gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John is recorded in the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, he will give you another helper, even the spirit of truth. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Okay, I know that hearing all of that, or even reading it for that matter, can be a little thick. I mean, we might scratch our heads and say, well, just what is Jesus getting at here? And yet these are good words to chew on in this Paschal season in general, and they are also good to prepare us for the remembrance of the day of Pentecost that's coming in not too many days from now. And finally, they are good for grasping better the import of your confirmations. 
And when I say your confirmations, I'm not just addressing all of you. I see you over there, Bella and Kayla and Kendall and Tess and Stella. I'm not just speaking to you, but I'm speaking to all of you here who have either been confirmed or are who are looking forward, even with perhaps mixed emotions, to eventually getting confirmed. So without getting too far afield, let me point out that this business of confirmation started with the ancient church's understanding of holy baptism. If you read the Acts of the Apostles, you will encounter folks who received baptism and then immediately upon being baptized showed signs that the Holy Spirit was at work and was showing that those baptisms were indeed legitimate. But there were other cases where folks who were baptized did not immediately show any signs of the Spirit until an apostle came to confirm the baptism by prayer and by the laying on of hands. So, by the end of the second century, the early church was convinced that baptism needed both the water applied in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and a successor of the apostles to lay hands on the baptized for the sealing in the Spirit. In the hierarchy of that time, bishops were seen as the successors of the apostles, so you needed a bishop to complete the baptism. Here's the problem. What if there wasn't one handy nearby? Well, they did the water baptism anyway, and then waited for a bishop to be available to confirm the baptism. And that's how we ended up with two different ceremonies, baptism and then this ceremony of confirmation. Now, let me add, no one thought that if the bishop didn't seal you with the Spirit that you were going to be in danger of losing him. Rather, the sealing was supposed to point the baptized to how the Holy Spirit was given to them not simply to create and sustain faith, but also to make them bold witnesses of Christ, no matter the trouble they might encounter because of it. Now, I should point out here that in terms of what the scriptures actually say, it turns out that the laying on of hands by a bishop, much less any other clergy, is not actually necessary for the sealing with the Spirit. All of you all have everything you need in the sacrament of holy baptism, period. But... In evangelical churches, we preserve this right of confirmation because it gives people the opportunity and the blessing to confess their faith, to make the good confession in public before many witnesses who, as the body of Christ, will then hold you to your words, at least hopefully. And that goes for all you five who are doing this today and the rest of everyone else. No one who has been confirmed in public gets ever to say in the future that he or she doesn't feel like going to worship or doesn't really want to live like a disciple today, or whenever any of the rest of you were confirmed, today you have confessed before God and the people here gathered that you intend to live as a Christian, even as the risen Lord intends to live in you by the work of the Holy Spirit. And that then brings us to our gospel reading. For those of you who were at worship last week, you'll remember that Jesus' words in John 14 are being spoken to the disciples just hours before his arrest in less than 24 hours from his death and burial. Jesus is preparing the disciples for what his death and resurrection will mean, at least as much as they are able to grasp at that point. And besides the forgiveness of sins and the inheritance of eternal life, one of the things that his death and resurrection opens to all believers is a new way of living with the Holy Spirit. While there will be more to say about that, come Pentecost today, we need to get this much. The Spirit had always been with God's faithful people, pointing them toward the salvation that God worked in Jesus Christ. So all believers throughout the whole of the Old Testament received forgiveness and life in the Messiah in anticipation of his coming. But with Jesus' incarnation and his dying in our flesh to redeem us from sin and his rising glorified in our flesh to give us life, with that work completed, now the Spirit was no longer pointing toward a future promise. No, now the Spirit delivers to the faithful the finished work of Jesus. This is why St. Paul gets so excited when he's inspired to uncover the mystery of holy baptism. Because of Jesus' completed work, not only does he send us his redeemed people, the Holy Spirit, but that Spirit now dwells in us and joins us to Jesus' death so that in him we die to sin. And the Spirit joins us to Jesus' resurrection so that we live in him. By his death and resurrection, Jesus has made it possible and real for the Holy Spirit, for his Spirit, to dwell with you and in you. You are now animated, you are enlivened, you are moved by something other than just yourself. Your wants, your fears, your hopes, your desires, your passions, those are all still there, mind you, but in you also moves the Spirit of Christ, the living Lord, 
And that spirit is constantly moving you to have faith and hope and love. Jesus told the disciples and us and the five of you, because I live, you also will live. And he's not just speaking about the biological function of living. Jesus lives by his Father's will. He lives as one with the Father, speaking his words, doing his work. And because Jesus has done that faithfully as one of us in our flesh, by giving you his Holy Spirit, he gives you that life, a life with God in grace that death cannot touch, which means that the Spirit will constantly nudge you to do the Father's will as you pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done. And the Spirit will move you to speak the Father's words and to do his work of love and service for those whose lives you are called to be a part of. And Jesus told the disciples that in that day, they encountered him alive and resurrected. In that day, they would know by the Spirit's work that Jesus really was doing the Father's work all the time because he was and is in the Father, sharing in his divine nature fully. But not only would they grasp Jesus' unity with the Father, they'd also see that they are in him, joined to Jesus by his work and spirit, that they live in him and are given to think his thoughts, to speak his words, to do his will. Not by threat, not by coercion, but as the natural consequence of being his body. And as they move in him, they will be assured by the Spirit that he is in them. And that is what is true for all of you. That's what you, Father, are going to be saying yes to in this ceremony. And that's what all of you who are already confirmed said yes to. And that is what all the baptized are called to. Because I live, you also will live. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And now may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the glorious day of his appearing. Amen. And it is now my pleasure to call forward our candidates for confirmation. Kayla Sue Carver, Bella Marley Crozier, Kendall Anye Gillespie, Stella May Kimball, and Tess Catherine Ruskuski, if you come here and stand with me. And just stand before that kneeler there. And as representative of the Board of Elders, Dr. Joel Eckert has a word to speak. Members of Mount Calvary Evangelical Lutheran Church, and you who are gathered as friends and family of these young women, on behalf of the Board of Elders, I am pleased to present these candidates to be received as communicant members of this congregation through the right of confirmation. They have been examined by the elders, and the Board gives its unanimous acclamation that they will all be admitted to the Lord's table. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. Tess, Stella, Kendall, Bella, Kayla. You have been baptized, and you have been taught the faith according to the Lord's bidding. The fulfillment of his bidding we now celebrate with thankful hearts, rejoicing to confess the faith into which you were baptized and which you yourselves will now confess before the church. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father in heaven, but he that denies me before men, I will deny him before my Father in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what in the name of the Lord and as a minister of his church I shall now ask you. So, Tess, Stella, Kendall, Bella, Kayla. Do each of you this day, in the presence of God in this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, by turn, answer, yes, I do. All right. Do you renounce the devil? And everyone rise. Say, yes, I renounce him. All right. Do you renounce all of his works? Together say, yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? If so, say, yes, I renounce them. Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, yes I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, yes I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Tess, Stella, Kendall, Bella, Kayla. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? If so, say, I do by turn. All right. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures, as you've learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true? If so, answer, I do. All right. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? If so, answer, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? If so, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, I do by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins as you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament. He who has begun his good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now I'm going to ask each of you to give me your right hand as a pledge of your promise and to kneel to receive the blessing. And we will begin with you, Tess. Stand forward. Give me your right hand. Tess Catherine Ruskuski, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And now, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and the fear of God. Amen. Stella May. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And now the God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification, and the fear of God. Amen. Kendall Anya. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And now, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification, and the fear of God. Amen. Bella Marley. I also can do all things through him who strengthens me. And now, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification in the fear of God. Amen. And Kayla Sue. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification in the fear of God. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand. Let us pray. Almighty God and most merciful Father, in the water of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit that they may live daily in contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their crosses with patience and joy until the day of 
the resurrection of their bodies to life in the mortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Please face the congregation. Upon this, your profession and promise, I invite you and welcome you as members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation to share with us in all the gifts our Lord has for his church and to live them out continually in his worship and service. The congregation says, We welcome you to be witnesses of Let us pray for the newly confirmed. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your children, to the knowledge of your eternal Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And if you face me one last time. The Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. Amen. And he will see. The congregation may be seated. I invite you to stand for the prayers. Lord God, whose divine thoughts and sublime ways are as far removed from ours as the heavens are from the earth, who lives to bless and communicate life, love, beauty, and joy throughout your universe, and to receive with pardon your penitent children, we praise and glorify you for your great goodness. We give you our heartfelt thanks for the precious gift of your Son, Jesus, whom you did send that we might have life and have it more abundantly, and who, to accomplish his ministry, innocently suffered in meekness and humility the afflictions of this life, took our sins and infirmities upon his own body, and bore them unto death on the cross. 
for this great salvation, for our deliverance from the dominion of death by his resurrection, and for the sweet hope of heaven, we glorify you, O Lord God, and sing forth the honor of your name. And now, trusting in the promise of your Son that whatsoever we shall ask of you in his name, you will grant, we beseech you to move our hearts to such love and affection for our Savior that in all things we will gladly hear his word and willingly obey his doctrine. O Lord, in your mercy, send forth your word, O God, into all the world that the power of its sacred truth may accomplish that for which you have sent it, bringing salvation where it is kept, condemnation where it is rejected, and judgment on the deeds of all men and women in this present time for eternity. Lord, in your mercy, bless your church and let her be both here in this congregation and in all places a loving union of the faithful, a holy communion in sacred things, a people of faith and prayer exercising a true religion and the doing of every merciful work. Lord, in your mercy, as you govern the nations of this earth, look in mercy upon them and turn them to the ways of justice, righteousness, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Especially do we beseech your gracious favor upon our land, bestow upon our president, our counselors, and legislatures, and all of our magistrates such endowments of mind and heart that they may perform their several duties with diligence, equity, honor, and intelligence. Defend us from enemies within and without, remove all grievances from our midst, inspire obedience to all just laws, overthrow all workers of unrighteousness and grant us a love of holiness and purity. For all who toil in industry, we pray that they may prosper and receive the fruit of their labor. For all who serve you in the professions, grant the satisfaction of a noble work. Bless the farmers and all who produce the fruits of the soil, that they may have favorable weather and a bountiful harvest, and ever acknowledge you who are the giver of our daily bread. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all our loved ones, especially do we remember before you the sick and those who mourn. Let them seek you and receive your gracious help and be mercifully delivered from all their distress. Lord, in your mercy. And hear us as we bring our concerns to you in our hearts. Comfort the family and friends of Phyllis Larson as they mourn her death and bring them hope in Christ's triumph over death in the grave. Great continued strength and recovery to Ray Qatar, Meryl Manthe, Jerry Yunk, Deb Wilson, Sue Elder, Ben Claude, Nancy Meyer, Carolyn Pauli, and Bonnie Brickman. Watch over Roger, Jane Wood, and Sally Taylor. Continue to strengthen Gary Ruckel, Dale Brinkman, Lee Moshbaugh, Virginia Tackman, Harry Coy, and Maddie Johnson. Uphold Lori Livingston, grant her strength and good health. Grant health and wholeness to Bruce Taggy. Bless and keep Jennifer Lentz. Give comfort and peace to Harold Paul. I continue to give Mr. Thompson strength and healing. Bless him as he prepares for his new call. Give healing and strength to Ann Jacobson. Strengthen Marty Likes, Bill Barr, Kanea Howell, Katie Wilson, Ron Achterberg, Ada Becker, Scott Grinsley, and Patty Coy. Grant health and healing to Hugh, Jessica Horman, Linda Perone, PJ Camacho, Pam Barr, Earl Boyette, and Mary Dowds. Give continued healing to Miguel Bulwark, Amanda Carpenter, Richard Coulter, Carol Hoffman, Carol Lockridge, Ms. Ritter, and Natalie Brusick. Give relief to Mark Manthe, give healing to Brian Kelly, Michael Wilson, Virginia David, Shirley, and Deacons Jillian. Grant recovery to Mark, grant health and strength to Harriet, Nora, Ann Bulwark, Chris, Patty, Jim, and Gary. Give continued strength to Jan, also watch over Ryan and Carol Stetzler, Bill Parrott, Sally Leon, Joanne Beddinghouse, TJ, Maureen and her children, Cheryl, Gloria, Sally, and Steve. Bless and keep Jenny Bradley, Theo Norman, Rebecca, Tanisha, Jenny, John, Constance, Linda, Kenneth, and Lori. Grant them all wellness, be healing for Pam and Dolores. Bless the Tompkins family and Clara. Grant grace to Jackie and her family. Give relief to Kathy and Lil. Grant strength and healing to Josh, Bill, Braylon, and Gabby. Give health to Gordon and Jim. Be with all travelers to give them safe journeys. Also watch over Shirley, Max, Miracle, Neil, Shane, Faith, Jenna, Steve, Eric, Gloria, Sandra, and Phyllis. Give grace and healing to Christiane and Ruth. Be with Luann and Shelby Cooper and Yasmin. Uphold Rick Pauli. Strengthen Sharon and Kathy. Be with Pastor Matthews, Diane Norris, Tommy, Scott Wilson, Maria Victoria Corrales, Pastor Drews, Teresa Carrick, Deb Alleg, Marsha, Delcy Lane, Becky Richards, Dave, Olivia Bradley, Sharon Rumble, Sherry Emberton, Sandra, Larry, Rod, Jenny, David, Shannon, Ward, Michael, Dale, Kathy, Gordon, Maureen, Pastor Neiman, 
Mary, Ethan, and Gail and Jonathan to give them healing and strength according to your will. Support and comfort all those recovering from disasters of various sorts. Be with those who are working to bring relief and recovery in every place where they are needed. We pray that you bring peace and justice to the nations. Keep the scourge of war far off. Stay the hand of the aggressor. Comfort and guard the innocent. Bring an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Do not let it spread. Heal the divisions that bring bitterness to our nation. We especially implore your grace to bring an end to all ethnic and racial bigotry and to grant understanding, grace, and equity to all. We lift up all who have suffered violent attacks this last week, especially victims of recent shootings, praying that you grant mercy, healing, faith, and justice, O Lord. Bring us peace. Watch over Pastor Hake and his family. Bless their service. Bless the ministry of Concordia Lutheran School. Bless Mrs. Kaufman as she prepares for her new call. Bless the school board as they seek to call new staff and provide them with strong candidates. Bless their deliberations in these next weeks as they prepare to extend a call to a principal. Be with all students and educators everywhere to keep them in health. Give grace and support to all learning situations. We also ask your grace for all students who are moving on to new education or new ventures in, as this academic year comes to its end. Make them fruitful in all their endeavors. Be with our synod and all of its officers, Matthew, our synodical president, Michael, our district president, and all synod and district officials, that they may be guided by your word to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Grant stability, faith, and hope to all who are struggling in this economy. Bless the people of Haiti as they struggle to recover and establish a stable civil life. Grant shelter and protection to all refugees, especially those displaced by the conflict in Syria. Finally, we ask that you send your spirit of peace to the Sudan, Somalia, Myanmar, Venezuela, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, nagorno karabakh the Middle East, especially Israel, Gaza, Iraq, Egypt, Syria, and Yemen, and all places torn by war or civil strife. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Here. We also ask that while our nation continues to live with peril, and while many remain in harm's way, that you would watch over us and show your mercy to all who are in danger or who suffer in any way. Comfort those who mourn, heal those who are injured, give wisdom and humility to those in authority. Continue to be with Derek Foote, Josh Zook, Alex Zook, Elizabeth Auer, Zeke Garrison, and all deployed and active duty military personnel and their families. Protect all innocent civilians everywhere, bring the wicked to justice, defend the righteous, and lead all to repent of evil and seek your peace. We know that all things are in your hands, Father, and we ask that you would bring justice and establish fair government according to your good and perfect will. Lord, in your mercy. And now, O oh Lord, keep us steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work, for we know that in you our labor is not in vain. Therefore, it is into your hands that we commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join in singing the offertory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, 
with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven. We loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done. Be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the New Testament, in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the Lamb of God.
May the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you in true faith, granting you the forgiveness of sins unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. We join in the post-communion. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in the closing.
Central State services are this Thursday, the 40 to 40K after uh, the Lord's resurrection. So we'll have services at 11, 15, and 6.30. So please join us if you can. Judy is still collecting names of graduates. So if there is in your circle of acquaintances, graduates from grade school, high school, junior college, college, graduate school, whatever, uh, we'd like to recognize them if you do so. Uh, Mother's Day diaper show from Lutherans for Life. If you were able to bring diapers or want to bring them next week, uh, we'll have the shelf and the coat rack. Next Sunday after the 11 point service, we'll be in the baked potato bar as a fellowship event for the congregation. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board across from our office, so you can join for that if you do so. Last Sunday, the second Illinois Holy Scholarship Sunday, if you want to help with that, there's information in the news and announcements. Worship the news committee, again, remind you that if you want to get a large print of the hymns, get that note to Judy, because starting in June, we're going back to using the general for uh, our hymns rather than having them printed out. June 7th, 